thoroughly delighted to be with you today. I love to spend this time with you Monday through Friday as we discuss issues of importance to your life and your faith. Always inviting you to join us live here, and the way that you do that is via phone and or through the chat features at our uh, social media site. So let me give you all of the info right up front here. Matthew Gabensky is our call screener. Here is the number to use to join us live here on Women of Grace Live via phone. It's a toll-free number for you in North America. It's 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Inviting you to pick up the phone, use it, call us. I bet you you have a question or a comment that you would like to make. If not, dream one up and call us with it. 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. 3986. We're also available for you out there at EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page. I'm inviting you to use that chat feature and put your question or comment in there, your uh, word of encouragement, your inspiration, or your insight. And Jeff Burson, who is our producer as well as our social media manager, will be sure to retrieve it and put it up on the board and we can address it here. I want to tell you about some of the exciting things coming up. Uh, you know, right now, as I am sitting here with you, I pull up the website of Women of Grace so that I can cite these with uh, great accuracy. <laughs> At least that's my attempt. Uh, and and I'm, I'm delighted because in our slideshow, uh, we've got uh, beautiful little slides about these events that are coming up. The very first one is this wonderful retreat that's coming up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, March 24th through the 26th. The theme is the Holy Duet, Mary and the Holy Spirit. And I got to tell you, I just absolutely love the image the graphic that we have for this event. And as soon as you see it, you will love it too. It's just so beautiful. It makes me smile every time I look at it. Uh, And I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want you to get out to the website and you can see it for yourself. When you go there, if you click on that, uh, it's going to take you to a landing page and it's going to give you information about this event that's happening at St. John Newman Regina Chaley Catholic Church there in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, March 24th through the 26th, the Holy Duet, Mary and the Holy Spirit, appropriately named uh, and appropriately placed in terms of uh, the time that we're going to be offering this because it starts the evening of the 24th and runs through all day the 25th. And what is March 25th? It is the Feast of the Annunciation. Uh, And so, you know, how much better can that be? The Holy Duet, Mary and the Holy Spirit, uh, talking about that reality on the Feast of the Annunciation. It ends on the 26th with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, closing out right around noon. Uh, We would love for you to attend this retreat. We've got room blocks for those of you that want to come in uh, from other parts of Pennsylvania. Uh, We have room blocks reserved for you too. Obviously, if you're coming in from Eastern Ohio, or if you're coming from any place at all within the country or outside of the country, we want to invite you to join us in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, March 24th through the 26th for the retreat. Now, preceding the retreat is another wonderful opportunity, and that opportunity is the uh, is the uh, Benedicta Enrichment Seminar that's going to be taking place on March 23rd and 24th at St. John Newman Regina Chaley Catholic Church in Pittsburgh. It precedes it. Now, you can come to the Benedicta Enrichment Seminar, and that's it, or you can come to the retreat, and that's it, or you can come to both of them, and many people choose to come to both of them. I'm going to be leading that Benedicta Enrichment Seminar, Two Days with Mary, A Journey into Our Mother's Heart. It starts on... Thursday, the 23rd at 9 a.m. in the morning, and it concludes on Friday, somewhere around midday, uh, right before we are uh, actually, yeah, maybe mid-afternoon is a better stated, uh, so that you can come to the retreat if you're coming to the retreat. So I am very eager for you to read about that. Again, that's available for you. All the info at womenofgrace.com. Please plan on joining us for, I would love to see it both. I really would. Uh, Both of these are going to be just absolutely dynamic. As I said, I'll be leading 
attending the enrichment seminar. I've got uh, the day planned for you, and it's going to be a beautiful day. And, you know, the Holy Spirit always has surprises for us uh, at these events. So, you know, I always come with great anticipation. First, just to be with all of you and to be able to present the uh, the, the beautiful subject matter uh, that is the, the, the heart of the retreat. But in the midst of that, you know, I always have expectant faith, and I always have holy anticipation because I know the Holy Spirit is going to do something amazing. And I just come with bated breath, waiting to see what is he going to do? What is he going to do? What's going to happen? What's going to take place? Uh, and, and I feel that way about the enrichment seminar, a seminar and also about the retreat. Andy Oni is going to be one of our re, uh, retreat presenters uh, on the 24th through the 26th. Uh, Monsignor Arthur Calkin is also going to be with us. And I cannot wait to hear these two speakers. Let me tell you what. Andy Oni is a powerhouse, a little lady. But boy, oh boy, this woman, uh, God uses her in abundant ways. It's going to be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And Monsignor Arthur Calkin, uh, uh, he is just absolutely dynamic. What an educator is he in addition to that what what a, a holy apostle of our blessed lady and the holy spirit is he so it's going to be just really fantastic i don't want you to miss out on it i want you to share this good news with your friends and with your neighbors i want you to tell the people at your parish get a gang of women together bring them with you let's spend this time together and see what the lord wants to do so get on out there take a look uh, see what's going on there all of that is available for you, the info at our website, and you can register right online. Something else coming up on March 14th, preceding all of those great events, is um, an online event with Father Chris Alar. The name of the event or the, the theme of the event is Divine Mercy, Light in the Darkness. Divine Mercy, Light in the Darkness. Uh, Father Chris Alar gives us such great insight about Divine Mercy. He is a wonderful preacher. He is a wonderful teacher. Um, had him on our television program many times. Always, always uh, enlightened by what it is that he has to share. This is an online event taking place Tuesday, March 14th at 7.30 p.m. Again, all of the info is at our website for you. Again, you can register right there. So please come and join us for these wonderful, wonderful events. So many other events that uh, are, are uh, there for you as well coming up in this 20th anniversary year of Women of Grace. We're celebrating it to the greatest extent that we can. And what is the best way to celebrate a great year, great events, to celebrate them in the heart of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, and through the Immaculate Heart of our Blessed Lady. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. So I'm inviting you to join us out there, inviting you to give us a call. In the meantime, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Don't be shy. Give it a try. Don't delay. Call right away. Pick up the phone and join us today. In addition to that, we're available for you at EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Uh, we are inviting you to use that chat feature. And Jeff Burson will retrieve your question or your comment or your message, whatever you're going to leave for us there. And he'll put it up on the board and we'll be able to address it. Eager to hear from you today. What in the world is the Lord doing in your life at this present moment? Love to hear about it right here on Women of Grace Live. I'm Janet Williams, 833-288-EWTN. Join us. We're coming right back after the break. Stay tuned. Mark Tile and Ernia, Mark Tile and Cassicus. Sin Diniti, Catholic Kuniki. Vivamos la verdad. Vivamos Catholicos. In any language, it means the same. Live truth. Live Catholic. EWTN. Now, someone might say, all right, okay, I'll grant you that I would worship the person of Christ if he walked in the room, but I'm not going to worship his image. Do you think that in venerating an image of Christ, that I'm venerating oil on canvas? Oh, you great oil. Oh, you great <laughs> canvas. No, obviously, what I'm venerating is the archetype. Called to Communion with Dr. David Anders. This afternoon, 2 Eastern on EWTN Radio. This is Johnette Williams. If you missed part of today's show, catch the Encore tomorrow morning at 3 Eastern or anytime at EWTN Podcast Central. Visit us at EWTN.com slash radio slash podcasts.
Hello, this is Dr. Alveda King of Priest for Life with Pro-Life Update. Today is Valentine's Day when many messages of affection are exchanged. It is therefore a good day to reflect on how holy human affection is. The emotions and attractions God has given us are not bad, but they are given to us to be governed by reason and grace. If we do not govern them, or if we always let them have the last word in our decisions, we will end up going against reason and grace alike. A culture of life is a culture that avoids two extremes. One, which looks down on all affection and thinks that the only good things are the things of the spirit. And the other, which allows the emotions to run out of control with no discipline. On this Valentine's Day, may God give us understanding, balance, and grace. This is Alveda King on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. The Women of Grace phone lines are open. 1-833-288-EWTN. 1-833-288-3986. Well, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Women of Grace Live. I'm Johnette Williams. Very, very happy to be with you today. We so love spending this time with you. Love to hear from you. We've got a toll-free number for you right here in North America. It's 833-288-EWTN. That's 833 833- Two eight eight three nine eight six. I'm inviting you to pick up the phone and to give us a call here today. I'm also inviting you to use the chat feature at EWTN Radio's YouTube channel or Facebook page. You can put your question or comment in there. Your insight, inspiration, or word of encouragement, and our producer, Jeff Burson, will dash on out there. He'll retrieve it, and guess what he'll do? He'll put it up uh, on the board for me, and I'll be able to address it. Matthew Gabensky on the phones today. Be sure to say howdy, hey, to Matthew when you call in. Well, you know, today is St. Valentine's Day. Today, uh, you know, is a day that we uh, acknowledge our need to love others, right? It's one of the great commandments. I think it gets lost a little bit. And we've got a question out there uh, from Dee Dee on Facebook. Are there pagan ties to Valentine's Day? Well, one thing I can tell you, I don't know if there are pagan ties to Valentine's Day, uh, but I can tell you this much. I can tell you that there are a lot of superstitions Didi, that surround Valentine's Day, and we know that we are not to participate in or believe in superstitions and superstitious practices, and we read that in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's in paragraph 2111, and this is what it says. Superstition is the deviation of religious feeling and of the practices the feeling imposes. It can even affect the worship we offer the true God when one attributes an importance in some way magical to certain practices otherwise lawful or necessary. To attribute the efficacy of prayers or of sacramental signs uh, to their mere external performance, apart from the interior dispositions that they demand, is to fall into superstition. So here are a few of the superstitions um, uh, that that are out there, you know, about Valentine's Day. And I'm reading these from um, the website, uh, let's see, theholidayspot.com. And here, here is one. By tradition, a young girl was supposed to eventually marry the first eligible male she met on Valentine's Day. Another one. To be awoken by a kiss on Valentine's Day is considered lucky. Here's a third one. Some may believe that birds have nothing to do with romance, but in fact, legend has it that if a woman spots a winged creature on February 14, it will predict the type of man she will marry. Well, now, you know, obviously, it's not hard to spot a bird, you know, flying through the air. (laughs) But it's not the bird flying through the air. It's the type of bird that's flying through the air that's predictive, uh, supposedly, superstitiously, of the type of man that a woman would marry. So here are some of the kinds of guys that you could end up marrying if you were to spot this particular bird. A dove, you would find a mate for life. A sparrow, you would marry someone poor. A robin, you would marry a sailor or a crime fighter. A goldfinch, you would marry a millionaire. A bluebird, you would marry someone happy. If you spot an owl, you will remain a spinster. Now remember, these are superstitions. We don't believe in any of this. I'm just putting it out there. Some people believe in this stuff. Blackbird, you would marry a clergyman. A crossbill, you would marry someone who's argumentative. If you see a squirrel, and I don't know if 
I guess it would be a flying squirrel, you would marry a cheapskate. So, you know, I mean, this is craziness, right? But so many people find themselves victim to superstitions. As a matter of fact, uh, on our program tomorrow with Sue Brinkman, we're dedicating the entire day to superstitions. But, you know, these are just... Uh, the, the some of the superstitions that surround this day. Uh, here's another superstition. If an individual thinks of five or six names considered to be suitable marriage partners and twists the stem of an apple while the names are being recited, then it is believed the eventual spouse will be the one whose name was recited at the moment the stem broke. Wow. Ah, and then, of course, the whole idea of Cupid. The son of Venus arouses feelings of love with his magical arrows. Today, Cupid's image, as you know, covers so many cards and candy boxes and a whole lot more. But that's all, you know, coming from pagan and superstitious beliefs. What about this one? In the 14th century, a sweetheart was chosen for the day by lot. Messages sent between these randomly chosen pairs are believed by some sources to be the forerunner of the modern day Valentine card. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Uh, and how about this? The traditional gift of red roses can be attributed to Venus, the Roman goddess of love and beauty preferred roses. Um, if someone receives red roses from her boyfriend on Valentine's Day, he loves her. You know, I'm not so much sure that that's like a superstition as it is, you know, just something reasonable to believe, you know. Um, anyway. Well, then, we can think about that. Get get this. If someone receives yellow roses from her boyfriend, he is jealous. Don't put any stock in this, ladies. If you get red roses, just be grateful. If you get yellow roses, you know, just be grateful. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I don't think that there's some kind of a hidden statement in there, you know. Uh, we can get ourselves into serious trouble by thinking that. Um, but um, here's one. Now, and I don't know what man would give his girlfriend a cactus plant. I mean, I, I, you know, well, maybe, I guess, maybe, but I don't know. They're so prickly. If a girl receives a cactus plant from her boyfriend, she will, she may have a quarrel, according to a superstition. Uh, you know, so there you go. I don't know what to say. Uh, one last one. In some countries, a young woman may receive a gift of clothing from a prospective suitor. If the get, gift is kept, then it means she has accepted his proposal of marriage. So be careful, gentlemen. <laughs> If you're not thinking <laughs> that you want to marry a girl, don't give her a gift of clothing because she just might get the wrong idea. But we'll leave it there, DD. You know, and I think, uh, you know, it's fascinating to see how these things crop up. I don't know that, uh, you know, I don't know how these things, you know, come around. But what I do know is that we are not to believe in superstitious practices, nor are we to participate uh, you know, in, in the wearing of, of superstitious uh, items such as rabbit's feet and, you know, lucky coins and things of that kind. Um, these amulets that sometimes people believe are warding off evil spirits, you know, they're, they're really against the teachings of the church. Give us a call, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. That is the way that you can join us today on Women of Grace Live. Maybe you have some superstitious practices that you're aware of uh, that, that about this particular day. Uh, maybe there was a very meaningful Valentine's Day uh, in your life. I know that a lot of people become engaged on this day. Uh, maybe you are one of those. You could share with us about your experience. But what is the whole purpose of it? The whole purpose is what? The whole purpose is for us to... Uh, Look at the reality and the importance of expressions of love in our lives. We need to experience love. We need to experience loving expressions. Uh, rightly understood, rightly understood, this deep desire to will the ultimate benefit for another, that is what love is. That is what true love is. True love is not about the roses. It's not about the candy. Although, gentlemen, you know, I just want to put out there that women appreciate those. And ladies, you know, perhaps you could do something lovely for your man as well. But it, it, those gestures of love are to have a greater significance behind them. Those gestures of love are, are meant to communicate to the other person how much it is that you want the very best for them. And what is that very best? The very best is eternal life. 
right? The very best is willing a, a, a deep relationship and union with our Lord Jesus Christ. So these are expressions of that fidelity, that faithfulness to the desire of wanting the best and doing everything that you can to bring about uh, that desire in the life of the one whom you love. And I mean, that's really how we should be thinking about days like this. Deanna Williston, hi Deanna, uh, says our local farm store had cacti that were somehow in the shape of a heart. Well, you know, I mean, again, it, I have nothing against cacti. <laughs> Please no, I do not. I had cacti in my yard in Florida, as a matter of fact. But the fact of the matter is, it just, you know, because of the needles and the prickly nature of them, you know, it's just to me like, you know, I would rather the velvety softness of a, of a rose petal <laughs> over a cacti or tulips, which happen to be my favorite flower. Um, anyway, note to Jack, note to Jack. Anyway, all of that being said, uh, Barb out there on YouTube says chocolate is the best gift. Well, I can't deny that, Barb. You know, we all love chocolate. Chocolate is yummy. Well, I shouldn't say we all do because maybe some people don't. Maybe some people can't have chocolate, but... Uh, chocolate is good. And dark chocolate is really very beneficial uh, health-wise because it contains a lot of magnesium and we need that mineral in our body. So something to think about there, gentlemen, you could buy some dark chocolate for your beloved and you would uh, not only be, uh, you know, giving her something savory to eat and delicious, but you would also be helping her health. 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. That's the way that you can join us here on Women of Grace Live as we talk about loving things on this Valentine's Day. Uh, what was the greatest gesture of love that you ever received? Boy, oh boy, would I love to hear about that one. That would be absolutely beautiful. You can also communicate with us as Adriana and Dee Dee and Barb have through EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Simply uh, use the chat feature there to put in your question, comment, insight, inspiration, or word of encouragement, and we will be quite certain to get it up on the board and to discuss it today. So we're talking about loving things today. We're talking about ways in which we show love. And I'm very reminded of the fact that um, very popular out there, I think still very popular out here, is the notion of a love language. You know, the way in which uh, you like to show your love for someone uh, and the way in which you acknowledge the love of someone best. Um, one of those love languages has to do uh, with with uh, the the um, uh, the gift of service to another, doing kind things for someone, uh, you know, taking care of little chores around the house, for example, or uh, you know, relieving uh, a particular burden from someone by taking on that burden yourself. Whether that is a, you know a physical thing that that needs to be accomplished or done, or whether it's even you know entering into intercessory prayer for someone. And, and through intercessory prayer, taking on a portion of the burden so that it lightens their load, uh, being, in a sense, a, a Simon of Cyrene who helps to carry that cross. Uh, the legend has it that Simon of Cyrene was not very happy about being pressed into service. Um, I prefer to think of him otherwise. I, I prefer to think of him as seeing this as a great privilege and a great honor, which the legend says he ultimately did because there was a conversion of heart uh, in, in helping our Lord to carry his cross. A beautiful thing happened there on the way to Calvary for him. Uh, you know, maybe you have done that. Maybe someone has done that for you, a beautiful, loving gesture. We would love to hear about it right here on Women of Grace Live. Another one of the uh, love languages is touch. You know, just the stroke of a cheek or an arm around somebody or being patted on the back, uh, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, just, just uh, holding hands, uh, you know, uh, signs of affection that come in that way. That's another way in which people interpret uh, love and another way in which people show love. So there's two of the love languages that I think so many people uh, uh, use to communicate how it is that they care for someone. Uh, how do you show that you care for someone? Uh, maybe it's through little notes, you know, through little notes. I remember uh, my husband, um, my late husband, Anthony, he was really the one who relieved a burden from me every day. He packed the children's lunches to go to school, and it wasn't so much that it was a burden to pack those lunches, packing it for them, but he took that chore upon himself so that I could be about other things that needed to be done at the same time. Uh, and he would include little notes 
in in their lunch boxes. Uh, sometimes he would even carve them into a banana that he would put in there. And I know at least um, one of my daughters has continued that practice to greater or lesser extent, probably both of them, because it was meaningful to the kids that open it up and they'd see a little note in there from their dad. Uh, another way of, of, of showing that we love somebody. YouTube out there, uh, Anna Marie there says, my hubby took all my broken jewelry over the years that I intended to fix and never did and had it all repaired. It was like receiving it all over again and it was so thoughtful. Now, what a creative gesture, Anna Marie. That is such a beautiful thing that your husband did. My goodness, I think that's lovely. You know, and uh, oftentimes, ladies, you know, we do have a box of broken jewelry. So gentlemen, you know, oftentimes that box is not very difficult to find. Uh, that's a very thoughtful thing, Anna Marie, that your husband did for you. Uh, have you done uh, something thoughtful for your loved one, uh, whether that loved one be your, your, uh, your, your husband or your wife or whether it be your intended or whether it be your dear friend? Maybe it is a child or a parent. You know, how have you shown your love to your loved one at some point in time? How have you received a token of love and appreciation from a loved one in the past? 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Inviting you to pick up the phone and give us a call. Also available for you out there, as you've seen demonstrated already in our program, we're available for you at EWTN Radio's YouTube channel. And Facebook page, just use the chat feature there and give us uh, a, your your insider inspiration, and we'll retrieve it and put it up on the board. So I'm inviting you to join us here today on this St. Valentine's Day. Uh, perhaps you have a special moment that took place on St. Valentine's Day, and you would like to share it with us. Maybe you're anticipating a special moment today. Hmm. Or maybe you have something very special planned for someone. We don't want to give it away, but oh well, we might like to know about it. Again, it's 833-288-3986. That's 833-288-EWTN. Uh, I can remember as a child, you know, all of the customs that we uh, had and the activities that we participated in. As I was growing up, you know, I was taught by religious sisters, uh, and I can remember that we used to take shoe boxes, and we would cut a slot out of the lid of the shoe box, and we would decorate that shoe box very beautifully, and we would then, sister would give us time throughout, uh, at some point in the day, where we could exchange these Valentine's Day cards you know, and we would go, you know, through the class and put Valentine's cards in, you know, people's uh, people's very beautifully decorated and not and sometimes not so beautifully decorated boxes, you know, and it was always so exciting to open them up and, and, and to read the cards and to see who sent you what. And, uh, you know, generally speaking, it was encouraged that there would be a card for every child in the class, that every child in the class had a card for every child in the class. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes um, we little girls read far too much into those cards that entered into the slot of our highly decorated shoe boxes. <laughs> Maybe you had certain kinds of things like that that colored your day on Valentine's Day. I remember so much of that with fond uh, with fond memories. <laughs> and so join us here. Share with us today, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. We enjoy hearing from you. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. Father William Casey, Kristalina Evert, Dr. Greg Popchick. The leading Catholic voices are on the largest Catholic media network in the world. You're listening to the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. There are a lot of ways to pray. When I was in the evangelical world, we didn't, we didn't like rote prayers that the Catholics prayed. No, nah, we, we wanted to say our own prayers. We thought that it was coming more from the heart. Any kind of prayer whether it comes from the heart and is a loose connection of words, or it is a prayer that the church has had for centuries, is good because it is prayer. This is Bishop Robert Baker, Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Birmingham in Alabama. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A prayer to end abortion. 
God, our loving Father, the author of all life, God, our creator, you gave birth to the life that is our precious gift, our own life. Help us to value that life that you've given to each one of us so that we do all in our power to promote life from the moment of conception until natural death for all people and to do all we humanly can to prevent abortion and to end abortion in our society in a special way to help those whose temptation is to end the life of a child in their womb. Be with us, Lord, and be with them as we work together to promote the cause of life, especially the life of the unborn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, this is Dr. David Anders. There are a lot of misconceptions about the Catholic faith. We clear them up on Call to Communion, coming up this afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. Now, back to Women of Grace with Johnette Williams. The Women of Grace phone lines are open. 1-833-288-EWTN. 1-833-288-3986. Well, welcome back, everybody. We are happy to be with you today, and I'm encouraging you to give us a call. Matt Kubinski is ready for you. I think he's drumming his fingers. <laughs> Please give us a call here and keep the man busy. 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. That's the way that you can join us. We're open for business. We'll uh, take any questions that you might have regarding Valentine's Day or any other day or anything that you would like to discuss today. Uh, Also available for you out there at EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Uh, They're very active out there. Uh, on YouTube and Facebook today. We've had lots of questions that have come into us that way or comments that were being made. From what I understand, there's also quite a conversation going on out there about, you know, the shoe boxes with the Valentines in it. I'm thinking that lots and lots and lots of you remember those days, uh, lovely days from, uh, you know, in my memories about Valentine's Day, always little butterflies in my stomach waiting to see who would give me a valentine? It was virtually everybody in the class because that's what we did. But you always wanted to see what valentine you got from whom because, you know, there was a whole lot that you could read into that. Um, share with us about a memory that you have from Valentine's Day. Or if you have any question or if you have a prayer request for us, we are here for you. Again, it's 833-288-3986. That's 833-288-EWTN. Well, Jeff, I do know that we've got uh, a comment that was left for us out there on our comment line. You can call us uh, after 4 in the afternoon Eastern time and use the same call-in number that we give you on the live shows to leave a message for us there that we will be able to address at some moment. And this is a good moment to take one. So let's see what we've got. Yes, thank you for taking my call. I think it's very important right now. Uh, when ev- everyone is having trouble with uh, one another or whatever, I believe in my uh, guardian angel. I pray the guardian angel prayer uh, very often. And I think it's very important for uh, even parents, like with small children and that, to uh, to bless them and to tell them about their guardian angel and uh, even for adults. The guardian angel is very important, and my guardian angel, I ask my guardian angel for a lot of things to pray, especially to the people I meet, and their, and ask my guardian angel to pray to their guardian angels, the ones that I meet and interact with. And I find this gives me a lot of comfort. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, thank you so very much for leaving that comment for us. I, you know, I want to just affirm what it is that you're saying. Uh, our guardian angels are very important, and I think that oftentimes, you know, we omit uh, really developing a relationship with our guardian angel, and that's a very holy thing to do. Uh, I remember Saint uh, Pio Pio Trochina, uh, affectionately known as Padre Pio who had the privilege of seeing his guardian angel. Now, we know that angels are non-corporeal beings. It means that they do not have a body. But we also know that they can assume, you know, a guise, if you will, uh, you know, a a, a human form uh, so that they can um, interact with
with us on some level. And Padre Pio had this gift of, of being able to see his guardian angel, and he thought everybody could see their guardian angels. But the fact of the matter is, no, that was a very special gift that he had. Uh, and he often uh, referred to his guardian angel, and he had a very, uh, you know, happy and holy relationship with regard to his guardian angels. We read in sacred scripture, and it's so beautifully illustrated for us in the book of Tobit, right, um, about how it is that, that angels can come to our aid. Uh, there is that saying that, you know, how do we know that we have not entertained angels in our midst? There's many stories in the lives of the saint, uh, saints where someone will show up uh, and, and um, you know, demonstrate an act of charity or be seeking an act of charity and receive an act of charity uh, from the person and then they will just disappear. Uh, we oftentimes have people that have called into our program and will share with us that they were in dire straits. I remember um, um, specifically Doug who calls in from time to time from the Minnesota area. Uh, he had been in a, in a motorcycle accident and uh, and it was an angel. He's convinced that showed up and came to his aid. Angel disappeared. Many others have had experiences like that. So our guardian angels are very very important to us, and and we should ask our guardian angels for their help and their assistance. This was recently brought home to me again, and I have to I have to admit this, and I, I admit this with remorse um, and sadness of heart. But you know I've had I've had a, a very fickle relationship with my guardian angel. There will be times in my life when I am very, uh, you know, attentive to my guardian angel. And then there will be hiatuses, you know, for, for a period of time where, you know, I'm paying my guardian angel no heed. And so I apologize to you, angel, you know, here on the air uh, for those times. But, but recently it was driven home to me how important our guardian angel is to us. And I'm saying now this within the, la the course of the last year or so. So I have been, um, every morning, uh, when when I pray my morning prayers, you know, uh, I always ask for the protection of St. Michael the Archangel. And following that prayer, I, I pray the, the little prayer that we learned as children to my guardian angel, angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love, commit me here ever this day, be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And I've been very deliberate about that. I can remember one time many years ago uh, when, and I've shared this on the air before, when I was very sick. And, and I did as our caller did. Um, I, you know, I was very sick and I, I needed to talk to my spiritual director. Uh, it was very important that I speak with my spiritual director. And, and my spiritual director was out of the country. I had no way of reaching my spiritual director whatsoever. And I said to my guardian angel, please go and prompt my spiritual director's guardian angel to ask you know, to please prompt my spiritual director's guardian angel to prompt my spiritual director to give me a call. And, you know, that thought was still being shaped and formed in my mind when the phone rang and it was my spiritual director. And I said, what caused you to call? And the response was, I just had this overwhelming prompting to give you a call. Now, you know, that's amazing. And it does point out one of the characteristics of our, our guardian angels, and that is how it is that they communicate. They communicate telepathically. So, you know, if we give our guardian angel permission, our guardian angel can see our thoughts. The evil one can never see our thoughts, but our guardian angels can. And in that instance, guardian angel did and quickly communicated telepathically to uh, my spiritual director's guardian angel to give me a call. And, and that happened. And I'm sure that many of you have had experiences with your guardian angel. And maybe on this day, you know, when, you know, love is in the air and we're, we're thinking about love and we're thinking about what true love is, that's willing the ultimate good for another. And the ultimate good is what eternal life working toward that being the kind of friend that leads our friend in those paths, as opposed to uh, leading in paths that would draw our friend away. It's also one way that you can tell if he's got a good friend or not a good friend or if somebody should be your friend or not, by the direction they're leading you in. Uh, but, but, but maybe what we need to do, too, is to think about this guardian angel who is this constant companion at our side, whether we recognize the angel or not. The angel is always there. We have Veronica with us out there in Mission, Texas, and I'm inviting you to call us, too, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986, also EWTN Radio's YouTube channel or Facebook page. Well, good morning to you, Veronica, in Mission, Texas. You are with us by YouTube, and you're calling us, too. Ah, that's lovely. How are you? Um, I'm okay. 
Okay. So tell us what's happening. Uh, I need a, a prayer for my for my youngest son and his wife. Okay. What what would is what what is the area of need for them? Uh, they have a problem uh, with their marriage. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's just come together because we're so reminded also. Uh, you know, on a day like this, that there are many couples that are struggling in their marriage. Um, And we also realize that there are many people that, um, you know, are very sorrowful on a day like this because uh, they have lost a loved one. Um, We want to, we want to make certain that in our relationships with those we love, that we are always not only willing the best for them, but that, 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 that we are working to bring about the best for them. And when couples stand before the altar of God uh, and make this, this covenantal uh, promise to each other, come into this relationship, a union before God and with God, oftentimes they're not thinking about the fact that there will be difficulties and struggles in life but that in the midst of all of that, they are to regard the other as they would regard their own soul and their own heart. So, Veronica, let us lift up your youngest son and and his wife. Father God, we bring this young couple before you in this moment, and you see the reality of their relationship. You see the ups and the downs of it. You see what currently is a wedge that's being driven between them. You know what it is. You can identify it. We don't always know. And sometimes that which we think is the wedge is not the real wedge at all, but is simply symptomatic of something much deeper. But Father, we know that through the sacrament of matrimony, we have grace specific to this sacrament that can be called upon to aid us in times of struggle, in times of uncertainty, in times of difficulty. And so I'm asking, Father, that through the power of the Holy Spirit now that this sacramental grace would be broken open and fall afresh on them. I'm asking that there would be a new entry on the part of this couple into the magnificence of matrimonial grace that it would become for them something that is palpable. I'm asking, Father, that through the Holy Spirit, a divine and holy chisel would be taken to their hearts to break away any hardness that has formed around their hearts in relation to each other. And also, what's coming to me here, Veronica, are defense mechanisms, fences, really, that have been... Um, uh, you know, have, have, have grown up uh, where they hold a portion of themselves back from each other for fear of getting hurt. Father, we know that in order for the sacrament of matrimony to be lived to its fullest, a husband and a wife must be vulnerable to each other. They must be open with each other. They must not allow fear to wall them in. Father, I ask that whatever walls might have been erected in this couple's relationship now would be taken down. I pray that at least one of them would receive the grace to be vulnerable to the other so that whatever it is that's causing this struggle can be exposed in the light as it remains hidden in the darkness It is a destructive force. But when it's brought into the light, it can be an instructive force that helps for them to begin anew. Mary, our mother, I would ask you, and I would ask you, St. Joseph, that you would pray and intercede for Veronica's son and his wife, and that through your intercession, a new day, a fresh day, a renewed day, might begin for them. And we offer you this prayer, Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the merits of his cross, through the power of the Holy Spirit, 
and with the maternal beatitude and intercession of our Blessed Lady. Amen. Amen. You know, Veronica, it, it's so clear how concerned you are for this young couple and how it's breaking your heart. I mean, that is all communicated through your tone of voice. Um, and I just want you to continue to have hope, right, uh, and to pray for them. Um, and when it's, it's, when it's appropriate, you know, to drop a word of wisdom here and there, and never as a chastising word, but always as a word of, of uh, love, always willing the best for them, but uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you when you should speak and when you shouldn't, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much for this word. Just, I need it so much for your prayer. Thank you so much. You're welcome, um, Veronica. Thank you. Amen. Okay, amen, sweetheart. I'll be tucking them in. I'm going to Mass in a little while, and I will be tucking them into into my Mass, okay? Yes, thank you. Go You're ahead. welcome. And God bless you now. Bye-bye. 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986 is the way that you can join us live here on Women of Grace Live, where we do love having that holy conversation with you. I'm inviting you to pick up the phone. Uh, I think most of, most of you must be out shopping or doing something today <laughs> on Valentine's Day because you're very, very quiet. 833-288-EWTN. Also available for you out there at EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page, inviting you to use the chat feature. Jeff, do we have another comment call that we can go to? Hello, my name is Emmanuel. Uh, I live in Delano, California. I'm a Catholic. Um, for anybody who asks uh, the question, is Mary mother of God or is Mary mother of Jesus? And it's both. Jesus is God, so Mary mother of God and Mary mother of Jesus, both correct. But the thing is that I need to get, get my point across to the people who ask that as they, I think they're confused of what the word mother means. They, they, I think they seem to think that mother means the creator of God or the creator of Jesus, and it's not that, like that. Mother is what the word mother is. Mother is uh, the, the nourisher of the, of the womb, inside the womb. Uh, she feeds, she gives birth, you know, uh, mother, not the creator. She just gives birth. God creates everything, and I think it's very important for them to know that because they're confused what the word mother means. Well, Emmanuel, thank you very, very much for your call. And, and I want to concur with what you're saying. Uh, you know, obviously a mother is a nurturer of the child who is in her womb. Uh, and there's no question about that. But the title Mother of God is really a statement about who Jesus Christ is. And there was a, a you know, there was a heresy uh, that, that rose up in the early days of the church that said that Mary was the mother only of Jesus' humanity. Uh, but when we know what we know is that that's false. Mary is the mother of the whole of Jesus. Jesus is hypostatic union. He is true God and true man. And you cannot split his nature into two. And this is what this heresy uh, was about striving to do. Uh, so uh, as a result of that, a, a council was called. And at that council, uh, it was determined that, no, this is a heresy. M Mary is the mother of of the whole Christ. She is mother of him. She is mother of, of, of Jesus, who is, as you say, true God and true man. So it's a statement of clarification about who Jesus Christ is. Uh, and, and so it, it, whenever we look at these titles of our Blessed Lady, uh, whether we look at the title of Mother of God, whether we look at Mary Immaculate Conception, uh, whatever it is, whatever this title is, it's really in reference. All of the dogmas regarding our Blessed Lady are really statements about who Jesus Christ is, right? In, 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 in coming... Uh, to this deeper understanding of, of who our Blessed Mother is, we understand better who Jesus is. And so that is, is what we want to say. Now, it, just the title Mother of God is really a, a, a derivation um, from a Greek title for Mary called Theotokos. And the Theotokos means God-bearer. So Mary, who was chosen by God, to be mother of the word made flesh, 
Mary, who was chosen by God from all eternity, fashioned by God, uh, you know, for this very specific purpose. And, you know, it boggles the mind to think about because everything is created by the word, right? By the word. We read that in John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, right? And, and so everything was created. God spoke. You see it in Genesis. God spoke and it was. God spoke and it was. God spoke and it was. Everything is created by the word. Here, the word who from all eternity, uh, was going to take flesh in time, the word fashioned, (laughs) fashioned his own mother, saw his own mother from all eternity, fashioned her specifically, perfectly uh, for this mission that would be hers to bear God to the word. The word made flesh, the second person of the blessed Trinity, enrobed in her flesh to bring him to to the world. It's an amazing thought, isn't it? It's an amazing thought. So Mary is truly God bearer. And so, you know, hence we have this title of Mary, Mary, mother of God. Yes, mother of Jesus, but but not just Jesus humanity, which can be inferred from the title mother of Jesus, you know, incorrectly inferred. But Jesus is true God and true man. She's the mother of the whole of him, the whole Christ she is the mother of. And so, hence the title, Mother of God. Now, um, you know, mothers don't create their children. That, that's something I wanted to just bring up because you stated, you know, mother doesn't mean the creator of the child. Of course not, because a mother doesn't create her child. Uh, you know, uh, God fashions the child. God takes matter, sperm. God takes matter, egg, and he unites them together for the creation of a human person with whom he was in love from before the very foundations of the world were laid in place and who took the opportunity of this union of husband and wife, man and woman, uh, to bring into being, to bring into time this person that he was in love with in his mind. This person did not pre-exist in heaven. Uh, in some fashion, but was always a thought in the mind of God. So you, Emmanuel, each one of us was always a thought in God's mind. And when he knew it was precisely the right moment, he took, he took our father's sperm and our mother's egg and united them. And at that very instant, we were created a human person and a human person is a composite of body and soul. So at that union, this, this is the amazing reality that takes place in the womb of woman, which um, Alice von Hildebrand, now gone on to her eternal reward, um, uh, Dr. Alice von Hildebrand, uh, you know, said that the uterus of a woman, her womb, is a hallowed place, a hallowed place. Because the, God, the hand of God uh, touches this union, this coming together of sperm and egg and places an immortal soul instantly as this union is happening and a human person is created. And that's why it is a great affront to God to kill the child in the womb. It is a right that no one has. Because no one has created that child. That child is a creation of God made in his image and likeness. Well, I thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, May you have a happy and holy Valentine's Day. And until we are together again, may the abundant life of Jesus Christ be yours and may God bless you. Get out to our website, womenofgrace.com. Sign up and join us for one of our events, either online or in person. We are there for you and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Until then. Have a happy and blessed day. Bye-bye now. Blessed Stanley Rother, a missionary 